what is going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. Hopefully it's not the first time you're watching one of my videos, but just in case it is, I'm a finally a medical student and a biomedical science graduate studying King's College London. And guys, one of the most common questions I always get asked on Instagram and in my emails, literally everywhere, is do I have any study tips that will help you guys do better in your exams? So I decided to sit down today and give you guys at least 11 study tips and all of the high yield tips to help you guys smash your exams. So if I was to go back in time eight years ago, when I first started university, if I could tell myself 10 or 11 things to help me improve my exam techniques, improve my scores in my exams, then this is the video that I wish I would be able to watch. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the first tip being the Pareto Principle. So the Pareto Principle says that roughly 80% of consequences come from 20% of the courses. Essentially what that means is that 80% of the results you get will come from 20% of the effort or the work that you put in. Now you might wonder why this actually applies to medicine. And the reason being is that when you're revising for your exams, so let's take an example. If you're revising anatomy, you can start by looking at the anatomy of the entire body. So maybe the skeleton and the muscles. Then you can move into even more detail, looking at the organs and how all of the different organ systems in the body work. You can get even deeper and closer into anatomy, looking at the cellular level. So how the actual muscles contract at the cellular level. And then you can continue getting even deeper, looking at how the actual cells work. So all the different organelles and everything like that. So you kind of get what I'm saying. In medicine especially, it's very easy to go down a random rabbit hole and try to learn one certain concept in so much detail and that would honestly waste you a lot of time. Say for example if you decide to learn 100% of the content of your exam that might take you about 100 hours and therefore you might get 100% on the actual exam. The alternative to that is let's say if you decide to aim to learn 20% of the content but that 20% is enough to get you 80% of the actual marks on your exam and that only took you around about 60 hours to actually learn. That's a huge amount of time saved. 60 hours compared to 100 hours. So in order to get 20% extra in the exam from 80 to 100% in the exam, which is almost double the time it took you to attain the 80% of marks on the exam, which is still a very, very good mark. So you really have to balance the time and effort that you put in between the overall mark you get in the year and also your ranking in the year. In medicine, again, it's very, very tricky because the difference between first place in the year and being in the top 1% of the year and being in the top 30% is only a difference between four or five marks and you have to ask yourself will getting an extra four or five marks in the exam really make me a better doctor will putting in an extra 50 hours of studying for the exam actually make me a better doctor you have to balance whether that increase in time is actually worth it or maybe whether that time you might spend revising could be used elsewhere for example making a youtube channel like i have or going traveling around the world or volunteering all these other things that you could be spending your time on could actually be uh, contributing to you genuinely being a better doctor and more of a well-rounded doctor so in summary, if we apply the Pareto principle with our learning, we really have to think about what is the 20% of content that I need to learn that will give me that 80% in the exam rather than spending hundreds of hours in the exam trying to get 100% uh, of the content learned and trying to aim for 100% in the exam. That's a Pareto principle. Let's move on to the next uh, technique. The next tip that I have for you guys is a two-in-one. The first part is do not make notes. What you want to be doing instead of making notes is actually using active recall. So active recall being actively testing yourself and testing your memory every single day by using prompts like questions or flashcards. I personally use flashcards, so I use a system on my laptop called Anki Flashcards. I have a whole entire video on how I use Anki to learn the content of medical school. That's up above. But essentially, you want to use something like flashcards or questions in order to actively challenge your memory every single day. The reason being is that we don't learn through highlighting. We don't learn through reading. Our brain learns through actively testing ourselves every single day on the content that we want to learn so that's the next tip please 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 don't waste time making notes make flashcards or make yourself questions in order to use active recall to constantly test your memory and that moves us on to the next tip when i was revising for my exams i would often spend six to eight hours sat down in the library and only taking a break whenever i felt like it that actually led me to be really burnt out and also lose interest in the content that i'm learning very very quickly and that's when i discovered the pomodoro technique so essentially what the pomodoro technique is that you work in blocks of 25 minutes followed by a five minute break and then another 25 minute block and you continue working for 25 5 25 and then once you do three 25 minute uh, working periods you can then take a half an hour break so that essentially splits up your learning period between 25 minutes of working and five minutes of taking a break and that extra five minutes that you get to have a break in between work periods really really helps and can really change the game for you i found that actually instead of 25 minutes i actually work better doing 30 minute blocks of time followed by five minute 
it breaks. That personally just worked better for me. But essentially what that meant for me is that during an entire day of working, I was actually able to work harder, work more efficiently and lose less interest in the work that I'm learning because of those breaks I had in between that would give me a good amount of time to rest. And that meant that I can actually stay working for a number of days straight. Now that's only one example of a technique that you can apply in medical school. Some people actually prefer working in four hour blocks followed by a one hour break and another four hour blocks. What I really suggest to you guys is to try out the Pomodoro technique, see if it works for you. And if it doesn't actually work for you, then try your best to change the amount of time that you're working. Maybe instead of doing 30 minutes, maybe do 45 minutes or an hour followed by a five minute timer. But the most important tip being find a work schedule that suits you. So for the fourth tip I have for you guys, this tip is to try your best to smash your coursework. So whether you're in high school in biology or chemistry or, or doing a degree like medicine or biomedical science, there'd often be a bunch of coursework that makes up your final grade. So for example, in biomedical science, our coursework actually was a huge chunk of our final grade. I think it was about 30 or 40% of the final grade. And these are huge opportunities that you can try your best to ensure that you smash. When you eventually come to the exams at the end of the year, you'll feel so much more comfortable and more confident in your exams, knowing that all of the coursework, that 40% of work that you've already done is all extremely um, high marks. And that means that as you approach the exam period, you'll be a lot more relaxed because you know that you're already on a very, very good foot and that all you need to do is score, you know, maybe slightly at the same mark or maybe even a higher, or even slightly less in the actual exams so that when they average the coursework with the actual exam mark, your average will actually be quite high. So every opportunity you have in your coursework, try your best to get the highest possible mark to make it easy on yourself when it comes to the exam period. The next tip that I have for you guys is to try your best to understand before you memorize. One really big mistake that I made in my high school years is that I would often memorize the entire textbook. So you can literally choose a random page in the textbook, ask me what a concept means, and I'll literally be able to describe it to you word for word. But the problem with that is that although I was able to, you know, kind of um, repeat what I read, I didn't really truly understand what I was learning. So when it came to the exams and I was asked um, to apply my knowledge, to apply my understanding on a certain concept, I wasn't able to do so because all I could do was regurgitate the information and I didn't necessarily understand what I was learning. Now this is obviously super important in medicine. Of course there is an aspect of memory that you just have to do. You have to just memorize certain drug doses and certain definitions. That's just something you have to do. But as well as that what's really, really important is understanding the actual body, understanding the actual physiology and it's through that understanding that will then lead you on to memorize the concept really really well. So for example if I was to prepare a roast chicken in the oven I haven't actually sat down with a pen and paper and wrote down all the individual steps, I just implicitly have it in my memory because I understand the process. I understand why we have to preheat the oven. I understand why we have to um, you know, oil the chicken before we put it in the oven. I understand why we have to add these spices to it. Because I understand what I am doing and how it works, the memory then comes straight after that. So when you're in school, what I would say is to try your best to explain any concept to a five-year-old. If you cannot explain this concept to a five-year-old or maybe to a lay person like your brother or sister, who's not necessarily studying your degree, if you cannot answer every single question they may have to the concept you're explaining, then you don't necessarily understand it yourself. So whenever I learn something, I immediately say to myself, how would I describe this to a five-year-old? How would it make sense to someone who doesn't understand this topic? And as soon as I'm able to do that, I immediately remember it for the rest of my life or for a very long period of time because I have that implicit understanding. And when I'm asked to actually apply my knowledge in the exam, especially in a medical school exam, which uses a lot of understanding I'd actually be able to do so because I understood the concepts behind the topic. Now that's the next tip. Let's move on to the next one. The next study technique that I often used was the principle of Parkinson's law. Now Parkinson's law states that work will fill the time that you assign to it. Essentially what that means is that if you give yourself one hour to do one task, you will do it in an hour. However, if you also give yourself 10 hours to do the same exact task, that same task will take you 10 hours. The work will expand to fill the time you assign to it. Now, how does that relate to medicine? Whenever I was um, in the library trying to study for my medical school exams. If let's say I was trying to learn how the heart actually works, if I gave myself nine hours, let's say in the library to learn how the heart works, it would actually take me nine hours. The reason being is that I know the back of my head that I have all day to learn this one concept. As I have all day, then you know maybe I'll be chatting to my friends more. Maybe I'll read my emails because I have the time. Maybe I'll go for a coffee break because I have the time. And then that one concept will take the whole entire day rather than taking the actual time that it requires. However, things change when I move on to my clinical years of medical school. When I moved on to my clinical years of medical school, I would often spend 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. 
in the hospital, you know, with patients. And then I go to the library at about 5 or 6 p.m. to sit down to then revise for my upcoming written exams. Now, if I'm getting to the library about 5 or 6 p.m., then I know that I only have probably two hours max to learn one certain concept. And it was really weird what I realized. I realized that in the two hours I give myself, because I only had two hours, in the same two hours, I was able to learn the same amount of concepts that I did in the nine hours that I would spend in the library learning about how the heart works. And that's due to Parkinson's law. When you're studying, the amount of studying and the amount of work you'll get through will depend on how much time you actually give to yourself. So now whenever I want to learn a concept, what I do is I schedule a specific amount of time to learn that specific uh, concept. What I might do is also turn on a timer and also maybe book something afterwards, like a, a cooking session or maybe a gym session to make sure that I have to leave the library at this particular time. And almost by magic, what happens is that that task definitely gets done because I gave myself a specific amount of time to do that thing. So whenever you're learning something, I highly recommend you use Parkinson's law and don't give yourself all day to achieve a certain task. Let's move on to the next tip. The next bit of advice that I honestly have for you guys is to focus on what you're bad at. When you're gonna sit down on your desk for eight hours straight, it really sucks to sit down and learn the things that you're bad at and you'd much rather uh, do the things that you enjoy or the things that you're good at. Trust me, I know how that feels. But in order to get those maximum marks in your exams, you really have to know the things you're bad at, right? You're only as good as your weakest link. And to give you guys a practical example of how this personally applied to me, when I was sitting my entrance exam to medical school, so the UCAT exam, I knew that I was naturally good at maths and a few other topics. However, I knew that I was rubbish at English and I knew that my reading speed was actually quite slow. And because the UCAT exam takes an average of all of your marks, I knew that if I scored quite badly in the English section, or the verbal reasoning section, that I knew that my overall mark will suffer because of my weaknesses. So what I did is rather than spending more time on the math section and the sections that I knew I was good at, I actually decided to spend very little time on those sections and try boost my weakness as much as I possibly can. And because I did that on the actual exam day, my score ended up being pretty good because I worked on my weakness and because my weakness actually wasn't a weakness anymore and it was actually a strength. So when you're revising for exams, I'd actually suggest that you rate every single concept. So what I like to do in my exams is I like to either leave a green light or green kind of highlights next to the topics that I know I'm very good at, the topics I definitely know. And then what I'll do is I'll leave a red uh, kind of color or highlight on the topics that I know that I just need to work on and I need to spend more time on in order to do well in the exam. That's my advice. Let's move on to the next tip, which is to do as many mock exams as you possibly can. Now, unfortunately in our world, and especially in your exams, how well you do in the exam doesn't necessarily have to do with how much you know and how much you understand in your brain. Now, the reason being is that because the exams sometimes isn't necessarily based on knowledge, a lot of the exam can actually be based on exam technique. So for example, you may know the entire anatomy of the body, but if you cannot apply the same principles to answer questions in the designated amount of time that you have, then unfortunately you won't get a good mark because you run out of time and you miss a bunch of questions. Mock exams are good for a number of reasons and I actually wrote them down. The first reason being that it will actually test your knowledge. So sometimes you may think you know a concept, but you don't actually know the concept until you're tested on it. So doing a mock exam can really help with that. Secondly, it actually applies active recall for you. So because the mock exam will ask you questions, it will force you to use active recall, which will therefore reinforce your memory and reinforce the concepts you know. Thirdly, it would actually allow you to learn the content and the sort of style of questions that the examiners tend to ask. So when I was rising for my medical school exams, I'd do so many questions over and over again, and I'd probably find that maybe 40% of the questions that are asked on the actual day of my exam questions that I've previously answered before in a different sort of mock exam. So that's super, super uh, important. And lastly, on that point, it really will allow you to predict what will come up. Oftentimes when I go on to my practical exams in medical school, I can almost predict what they're gonna ask me because I've practiced so many questions and I know the content of the exam so well. In my experience in medical school, I'd often spend maybe 30% of my time learning the theory and learning the content for the exam. And 70% of my time will just be spent doing thousands of questions leading up to the exam. And that's literally all I did for final year. In order to pass my exams in final year and also in fourth year, the majority of my time was spent doing thousands and thousands of questions. I literally had a question bank that I would reset at the end and do them all over again to make sure that my brain is using active recall and also getting to know the sort of style of questions that is asked in the exam. I know this kind of seems really silly. I know we should be learning for the sake of learning, but unfortunately the way questions are asked, unfortunately the way exams go these days, you kind of have to play the game of exams and try and maximize your score by doing as many questions as you possibly can rather than just learning the theory and, and 
and learning for kind of learning's sake. The next tip I have for you is to try your best to study with your friends. Now, the mistake that I made in my last degree is that for some reason, I didn't like working with my friends, maybe because I felt like they're my competition or maybe because I might give them extra marks in the exam or something, which is so silly and so immature. What I really recommend you guys do is to find a nice group of students who you like and who you get along with and also people who are probably as smart as you or even smarter or people you can actually help as well. That will make such a difference in your exams. I actually wrote down a few things as to why I think working with friends is amazing. The first one being that, as I said, it's just more fun. If you're in a room with your friends working together, it is inherently more fun and you enjoy the process much more. Secondly, three brains are better than one. So if you're working with three friends, three brains are much, much better than one. For example, during my medical school exams, sometimes we'd all sit in a room and we'd do a bunch of questions together. And if I didn't understand a concept and I got the answer wrong, my friends can actually explain the concept to me and I'll get a lot more benefit and a lot more value just by having two other smart people next to me to help me with the exams and vice versa. Thirdly, it can also keep you accountable. So if you're in a group of people, you're all studying the library together. If one person goes off to watch Netflix, then you can definitely say to them, like, why are you watching Netflix? We're here to study. And if your friends are good like you are, then they definitely will hold you accountable to make sure that you're working as well. And finally, it's much more fun and life is just much more better when you're all improving together, when you're all helping each other and you can all do well in your exam. And if you watch all of my last vlogs, you know that that's definitely what I do. I always studied with Nasir and Georgina. That's just something we did throughout medical school and it really gave us a lot of benefit when preparing for our exams. The second last tip that I have for you guys is to try your best to separate your workspace from your chill space. Now, the thing with working in my room, I love my room. I have a lovely desk set up behind me, a nice big uh, monitor and all these things. The problem with this is that my Xbox is also right there and my bed is also right there. So this means that I'm just naturally more distracted because I have the things I can easily access immediately. If I want to play Xbox, all I have to do is to press a button and I will literally be playing Xbox in two seconds. Also, I really do believe that certain locations have certain energies. So when I enter my room to study, I don't feel the energy of studying because I'm literally where I sleep all night. So if you want to be in environments to do well, I highly recommend you go to a coffee shop or maybe to a library because if you go to these public places, you definitely will feed off the energy of other people. You'll see other people working really, really hard and that will definitely affect the energy that you have have to work and most importantly you won't have all of these distractions around you that may get it in the way of you actually working and that brings us on to our final tip which is to enjoy your time in university as much as you possibly can one big problem that i had especially during this final year of medical school and particularly because i'm so close to being a doctor i would often defer my happiness to the future because i tell myself that i will eventually be happy once i become a doctor i will you know have more fun when i'm a doctor and that mindset really is not helpful whatsoever. And the reason for that is that medical school is one of the funnest periods of time you will have in your entire life. While at university, you'll be with your friends. You might actually live with your friends. You'd have a lot more time than you will when you're actually working in the real world. So just know that the time to actually work is coming. You will have that time to work. But what's really, really important is to enjoy the journey, enjoy the process through medical school, through university. I promise you it will be the best time of your life. And we're gonna leave this video on that final point. If you guys derived any sort of value for this video, please leave a thumbs up leave a comment down below make sure you subscribe with notifications on and what i'll do is leave a bunch of videos here on my channel to do with studying and hopefully that will further help elevate your game when it comes to passing your exams thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you on the next one